Novak Djokovic has strengthened his credentials to be called the greatest tennis player of all time. The Serbian won a record extending 10th Australian Open title by beating Stefano Tsitsipas in Melbourne, which pulls him level with Rafael Nadal on 22 Grand Slam titles. Djokovic had beaten Tsitsipas in the French Open final back in 2021. Coming from two sets down, however, this time it wasn't quite as grueling despite a battling display from the third seed. Fourth seed Djokovic came into the final in red-hot form and carried that momentum against the Greek. He dropped just five points on his serve in the first set and needed just 36 minutes to take the opener 6-3. Tsitsipas, who was chasing his first major title, raised his levels in the second set and took it to a tie-break. But the Serbian once again came up trumps when it mattered to go two sets up at the Rod Lever Arena. The third set was once again a tight fight. The two exchanged breaks early on and it once again went to a tie break. The results seemed inevitable at that point. And Djokovic sealed a 6-3-7-6-7-6 victory. Djokovic missed last year's Australian Open due to his unvaccinated status. And this title is yet another statement from the Serbian. All right, for more on that spectacular win, we are now joined by our sports editor, Digvijay Singh Dio. Digvijay, what a statement yet again uh, from uh, uh, the champion to think that last year Djokovic could not even play Australian Open because he was not vaccinated. And this time he has really proven, not just during the Australian Open, but really in the last two weeks, that he is well and truly back. You know, Neha, the two words which sort of come to my mind are true grit because um, there is the tennis angle and we all know that Novak Djokovic is a supreme tennis player. But the emotional angle and that was something which, which had me hooked when I was watching that final was after he won, how he climbed into the stands and broke down. I have never seen Novak Djokovic get so emotional on a tennis court and I think it just took him back to what happened last year. Not just was he not allowed to play, he was treated like a common criminal player. And, and that, that is something which sort of uh, has fueled that fire in him. Uh, all through this uh, last year, he barely played. He played, what, 11 tournaments last year because of his unvaccinated status. He goes from here, he'll not be allowed to play in the US. He won't be able to play the Sunshine Double in Indian Wales and Miami as well. But this is that heart of a champion. I think, you know, Roger Federer had his legion of fans. So has Rafael Nadal. Djokovic today has won his 22nd bronze level with the great Nadal. He may not be the people's champion that Federer was or uh, Nadal is. But you cannot deny that he is one exceptional tennis player. And, and I think I don't think there'll be any person in the tennis world or in, in the wider world of sport who will, will not have a sort of a lump in their throat, seeing Djokovic just collapse into the arms of his of his coaching staff and his and his family. Quite amazing the way you talked about how he got so emotional there. Uh, you know, Digvijay Sitsipas, of course, produced a batting display, but ultimately Djokovic proved that he had all the answers when it mattered. At this point, it is very clear that Djokovic has all the momentum going for him. Would you say that he has cemented his status as the best tennis player in the world? You know, these days we constantly have this debate about who is the GOAT in every sport, right? I mean, we had that with the F uh, Football World Cup recently. Now, uh, in the context of tennis, do you think he really has cemented that position? Well, I, I think there's still a bit left when it comes to, as I said, when it comes to the people's champion, it's always going to be Roger Federer. But let's look at own statistics. At the moment, it's him level with Rafael Nadal. Rafael Nadal heads into the French Open and we sort of know that this is probably going to be the last year we see Rafael Nadal uh, play uh, competitive tennis. So, uh, I've been speaking to a lot of experts ahead of this tournament, you know, including Rajiv Brahm, uh, who, who was speaking to us uh, ahead of the Australian Open. Uh, the reigning U.S. Open champion and number one doubles player in the world. And he said that 2023 is going to be the defining year in the GOAT race. Because you are expecting Djokovic to go to Paris and really challenge Nadal. And two interesting similarities here. 
Nadal has played 14 French Open finals. He's never lost a final. Djokovic has played 10 Australian Open finals. He's never lost a final. I think if Djokovic beats Nadal in Paris, I think that will sort of cement his legacy as the greatest tennis player of this generation. Is he the greatest tennis player of all time? Well, there are others who say you don't compare. Eras, the great broad neighbor, won the Grand Slam, which is the four Grand Slams in a year, twice. And then you also have the great Martina Navratilova over in the women's who, who won her last Grand Slam at the age of 49, 50, and she won 59 Grand Slams. So perhaps the greatest of all time of this generation, I think the French Open will decide that. Very interesting. And, uh, you know, I have to say that while I agree that uh, comparisons are odious and it's not fair really to compare legends, but as far as the GOAT debate in tennis, men's tennis goes, I think I have to go with Roger Federer really. But since we're talking about Novak Djokovic today, uh, you say, uh, you know, that 2023 is going to be a very crucial year for him. Given the momentum that he has now going for him, do you believe he is truly in pole position to win that 23rd Grand Slam title to pull clear of his long-term rival Rafael Nadal. You, of course, mentioned that if he does beat him, then that certainly cements his position as the number one player of the current generation. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to say if he can carry this momentum through because let's not forget, heading into the French Open, you now have the two hardcore masters in Indian Wales and in uh, in Miami, he's not playing that. As things stand, he's not playing that because uh, the entry requirements for the United States require proof of COVID vaccination. That means that he is going to then have to really hit that uh, the clay court swing, which starts in Monte Carlo, Barcelona, uh, Madrid, and, and and Rome, heading into into the French Open, and, and that will perhaps define what sort of momentum he carries into that French. Let's not forget Rafa Nadal himself is out. Rafa Nadal is injured and he is also expected back during that uh, that European play court swing. So it's, it's poised to be a very fascinating lead up to that French Open. And after the French, there is obviously just two or three weeks for Wimbledon, where Djokovic is, is, is the defending champion and he is the favourite to win. Uh, I also sort of, conversations I've had on the tennis circuit, everyone seems to say, then let's not forget that Djokovic didn't play last year many tournaments. So when you look at Carlos Alcaraz becoming the world number one after uh, winning the US Open, there was no Djokovic there. And I think Djokovic has today sent out a message to the chasing pack, which is the Sixty passes of the world, the Rublets of the world who he beat early on. Medvedev didn't even get here. And uh, Alcaraz is not even here. If you want that number one ranking, if you think you can displace me, it's not going to be very easy. You've got to take him out at his grandstand. And he's just a, a supreme, uh, his athleticism, his sort of energy levels and his command of that court. And perhaps the occasion is what makes him uh, a great champion. The age difference between him and Sixtapas is quite, quite, quite much. I think it's like 10 years. And there wasn't any moment behind that final where you sort of thought that Sixtapas had an edge over him. Absolutely right, Devijay. Difficult to say how 2023 may pan out. Yes, it's not going to be easy. He has his task cut out, but I think one thing we can all agree on is that Djokovic is an extraordinary champion and a legend, something he's proven yet again with this massive win today. Lovely talking to you, Devijay. Nothing like sports to lift one's spirits. Thank you so much. And I must tell you, I, I, I must tell you that I'm right here at the Hockey World Cup final. So we've had one big final. There's another big final coming up in what, in about an hour from now. All I can say is we're very envious of you, Digvijay. Hope you enjoy the game. Have a great time. And we will come back to you for more on that big story. Thank you so much for all those details.